This is war. War and its masses. War and its men. War and its machines. Together they form the big picture. Welcome to the big picture. I'm Captain Carl Zimmerman. The big picture is a report to you from your army, an army committed by you, the people of the United States, to stop communist aggression wherever it may strike. The big picture during the next 13 weeks will trace the course of events in the Korean campaign with first-hand reports from our combat veterans and film taken by combat cameramen of the Army Signal Corps. These are the men who daily record on film the big picture as it happens, where it happens. Today the big picture brings into focus the first 40 days in Korea. It was the beginning of the fighting there when every ridge was a heartbreak ridge. Let's go back to June 1950, when our troops felt the first thrusts across the 38th parallel. The story is best told in the language of the soldier who was there. This story is hard to tell, painful, because our outfit was in training a few weeks ago. Some of the boys who were with us aren't around anymore. They were good men. Good soldiers. They had learned to fight, and they had the guts for fighting. But when it came, it was like a sock on the back of the head. Korea started rough. The first 40 days were a battle for time, with a handful of men against an army. Yes, they were good men, good soldiers. And no story of the Korean War can be told without saying first how well they fought against great odds. In the beginning, there were only a couple of companies from the 24th Division. No brass bands at the airport. A few days before, some of us had been in cities, spending leave time at Fuji, something like that. We weren't scared. We didn't know. We got stuff out of the planes. We moved out. Nobody said, this is it. Nobody said you have arrived in Korea to beat back five North Korean communist divisions. Somebody did say, we're here to delay the Reds. Okay, let's go. About 10% of us were veterans. A few roads looked like France, somewhere between Paris and Metz. Mostly the soldiers were young, no battle experience. They smiled a lot. They made the whole lot of us look like good-natured Yanks, glad to see a new town. Now, some of these boys enlisted to travel, but whoever sees travel posters about Korea, relax, come to the land of the morning calm. At first, the towns looked like any towns in this part of the world. And the South Korean troops, like any soldiers, you know, they worry about the same things and get tired. I mean, tired. We all wanted to ask, what was it like up there? What kind of fighting, terrain, tactics, guns? But as far as we were concerned, those Koreans couldn't talk. We were in a completely foreign country, with no time to get acquainted. They emptied a town, hardly a thing left. You couldn't buy anything, even if you had the time. Which we didn't have. 
There are two ways of getting to know the terrain, walking over it and feeling how it was underneath. Underneath it was caked and sticky. The tools of a soldier's trade, a shovel and a gun. We had small stuff with us, machine guns, some howitzers. It was hard to believe. One, two, three, we were smack in the middle of a war. Guns ready, aimed north, against an enemy that would look exactly like our friends, the South Koreans. These troops had seen action. They didn't have to speak. Their clothes spoke. Their shoes spoke. Their eyes spoke. We got set. Like I said, when it came, it was fast and it was all around us. They threw everything at us. We answered. We went ahead. It was like D-Day, with no warning. Those kids, they became veterans overnight. Tough, hard, nervy. They moved as if they'd been with us all through Germany. There were too many North.